structures and just like making the bed in the morning or <laughs> driving the car. It's, it just is what it is. I do it every day and it's, it's not really, uh, let's put it this way. I got to try and find innovative ways for myself to stay interested in this. Being that I'm seeing that the majority of people are not interested in it. I've tried to get them interested in it, but I feel that people are more prone to be attracted to the flashy stuff. I'm not gonna mention the other channel's names, but they, you know who they are. They got thousands of viewers, and it's all about assumption, presumption. Uh, opinion, it's about what conspiracy theory uh, can we sell the people on today? Let's talk. Let's talk about an international bankruptcy. Let's talk about the copyrights to the flag are up. Let me ask you something. Those of you who are listening right now that know the history of, or the alleged history of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. When you hear David and Russell tell the story about how they quote unquote captured the one by one point nine flag that the copyrights expired at a certain day. Does any of that make sense to you? Let's think about this logically. There was no correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, copyright on that flag. There wasn't any. And then after they captured the flag, there still wasn't a correct sentence structure constitution for that flag. Meaning, a constitution written in 100% correct sentence structure. Mathematically certified forwards and backwards. There still isn't. So if you really think about it, what, what did they capture? When there was nothing correct there to begin with. What is it exactly that they did? if they did anything at all. Just something to chew on, folks. Just something to chew on. I'm saying, though, that my take on it, and I have not been proven wrong, I have yet to be proven wrong, I've yet to have anybody actually challenge me on this. My position is, if you know the grammar, 100%, you know it well enough to teach someone else on the spot under duress, then you have the authority to use that flag, the grammar flag, and be successful with it. It's simple. That's the way I look at it. That's the way I use it. And I have never, ever been challenged on it. And I've never, ever failed at it. So there's something there, but if you really think about the stories that David and Russell told, there's something missing. There's, it just doesn't add up. And they're constantly talking about, well, you didn't use correct grammar. You're using language modification. You did this, you did that. We have treaties with this place and that place. What kind of treaty, though? Is it a correct sentence structure treaty? Are they live life claimants? Where are these contracts? Let us see these contracts. But folks like their fiction diets. Here's a question for you. 65 degrees Fahrenheit out here. Uh, just a little bit ago, I was driving through Detroit over by Kaju and, uh, in the 94. And... Um, Bro, 65 degrees Fahrenheit, and you see a fella walking down the street in a heavy, heavy winter coat and a winter hat, long pants, boots. What's the first thing that crosses your mind? What's the first thought that enters your head when you see that? 65 degrees, sunny out, kind of balmy, humid, and there's a fella walking down the street with 
full winter hat, full winter coat, winter boots, pants. What comes into your head when you see that? Like, what, what do you think of that? What's your assessment of that scenario? <clears throat> Anybody? <laughs> Homeless are from Southern Florida. It's my experience that when I see someone like that, that tells me that they are not what I would consider to be not all there mentally. They're a little off. I, I know we're all a little bit crazy, right? All of us are. But there's a special kind of crazy out there. And there are folks out there down in that area that do not have a home. And they sit on the corner by the freeways and uh, beg for money. Some of them are veterans. Shame on you, United States Corporation. Some of them aren't. And yes, I know most of them are probably addicted to some sort of illegal substance. I'm not going to judge anybody on that. I used to I used to be very uh, stringent and very judgmental about things like that. Like when I lived in Arizona and uh, this kid came up to me, he was obviously homeless, and he said, hey, can you spare any change? And I looked at him and I said, bro, I said, the only one that can change is you. And I thought that was pretty clever, but later on I feel like, what a, what a jerk. What, what kind of a jerk says that to a homeless person that comes up and, and begs for money? Wow. So that was quite the learning experience. So now if I do have some extra, I will, I will hand it off to them. And my, my whole point of that is, well, it's a couple reasons. I watch their reaction when I, when I give them what I give them. If they look down immediately at what you're handing them, then they're probably running off to, to, to go get high. There's no doubt about it. Because they're looking immediately to see how much you gave them. But if they look you in the eye, like they make eye contact, and then they genuinely say thank you, then, then it gives you a really, a really nice feeling. Because you know you're helping them out. Now, even if I'm, I'm giving it to them and, they, and I know they're going to go use it not for food, they're going to use it for something else, it, it doesn't matter to me because to me, I gave them a moment's happiness in whatever life they're living. Because everybody's in, everybody's in the shit, folks. All right, in one form or another. Everybody's got their stories, their trials and tribulations. Who am I to judge someone else? I think I'm past that. So that's my stance on it. Uh, I don't care what they do with it. To me, I'm donating the gift of happiness in the now space to this individual, whatever that entails, whether that's getting themselves a burger, a soda at the, at the shop, a six pack, a bottle of liquor, whatever it is they're spending it on, a hotel room, motel room, doesn't matter. It gave them relief for, for a few moments. So that's the way I look at that. Cosmos can't help but uh, recognize things like that. You're putting, you're putting an investment in your karma. That's the way I look at it when, when you do things like that. Um, what, what the hell else is I going to talk about here? Something. Oh, yeah. Hulu 2. Holo 2. Is that how you say that? 
Hulu too. That's how you say it. So I saw your name. I know who you are. Uh, I'm going to talk about my lunch break. Folks out there, there's a channel called My Lunch Break. It's pretty neat. You ought to check it out. Um, just watching a couple videos on there regarding underground catacombs under Paris. Supposedly 200 miles or so worth of underground catacombs of neatly, artistically, geometrically arranged human bones, femurs and skulls. Supposedly six, the bones of six million dead bodies under the city of Paris. And it is a tourist attraction, and it is uh, accessible through a church. And if you watch these videos, it, it explains, theorizes how this happened. Of course, the church was purposely built on top of these things. Why, though? What's the deal? So this brought me back to... Uh, Darn it. Let me look this up. I want to say his name's Dave McGowan, and I don't mean the late Dave McGowan that wrote uh, Wagging the Moon Doggy and Inside the LC and cool stuff like that, Program to Kill. Not that guy. Although that guy is equally as cool. Uh, oh, yeah, 1,000 miles under Paris. And. Uh, Ukraine, yeah, also in Ukraine, and then also all over the world, like in Brazil, there are so many places that uh, have these underground catacombs. Check it out. There is an old, old, I did a video on this on, on my Coral Blade Grotto YouTube channel of the oldest church in Detroit. I bet, I'll bet you dollars to donuts there's underground catacombs there. But uh, the point I wanted to make is that guaranteed folks, especially if you're out in the country in the rural areas, you drive by a church, an old church in the country, you will find a freaking cemetery next to it every single time. Guaranteed. 9.9 .9 times out of 10, if you see a church in the country, in the back roads, in the back country, you're going to find a cemetery right next to that church. And it's the same thing in cities, too. Old churches that have not been moved. If you look in Detroit, Cleveland, the big cities, Pittsburgh, Philly, the old cities, the big cities, you'll find all these newfangled buildings and skyscrapers and cheap-ass-looking architecture. But the churches, the old churches, look like they're from another era, which, of course, they are. They almost look Tartarian, Germanic, Russian. A lot of them, like the Catholic churches, look very, to me, they look very creepy and threatening and ominous and pointy. Like very jagged and pointy and dark. But then you look at these other Tartarian type churches that always have the rounded spires on them. Like they're, they have rounded edges, kind of like mosques or temples. But the Catholic churches are very scary looking. I guess that's the only way I can put it. The, the place where I went to school in uh, Pennsylvania was called Sacred Heart. And it, it looks exactly like that. Another thing about Catholic churches, interesting, pointed out to me by Colin David Eiffelwin Colin Miller back in uh, 2017, is that all Catholic churches have one tall spire steeple and a smaller one. And it represents the two keys, the gold and silver key that, uh, shoot, was it Peter or Paul? One of those fictional characters had the two keys. And you see it symbolized uh, in Great Britain, the silver key, the gold key. You'll see the fringes related to that, uh, the Vatican, all that stuff. But yeah, Catholic churches have the symbolism of the keys, the two main keys on their steeples. 
In any case, you will find a cemetery near there, or at least one that had to be excavated or built over top of, and probably underground. Who knows? Who knows? Which brings me to courthouses. I wonder if courthouses are also near to cemeteries. Let me find the, this guy. I was looking up this guy. His name, I don't think his name is McGowan. Uh, Dave. Dave Cowan, Hulu 2. Dave Cowan is the name of the fellow who wrote the books on the ley lines and the cemeteries and the in the churches. Do we have any comments? Do we have anybody asking any questions? Does anybody want to give any compliments, questions, criticisms? Anybody want to challenge me? Anybody want to step up and get in a roasting battle? Anything. I'm here for you. Don't be scared. So as I said at the beginning, I'm just going to do this channel to, to make myself happy now. I'm going to stop trying to guess what you folks out there want because you folks don't really participate. So I, it leads me to think that those of you out there viewing that you're not really sure about this. And the way you can get sure about it is to definitely set up a study schedule. A simple thing is, I mean, if you're interested in learning this grammar technology, the simple thing is to maybe set aside 30 minutes every single day and say, okay, I'm going to watch videos in this 30 minute period and I'm going to study parse. So you go into the parse playlist and you study those videos for 30 minutes. Tomorrow, same thing. Pick something. Okay, I'll continue parse or maybe now let's check out syntax and do the syntax playlist. Do the correct sentence structure playlist. Hey, let's let's cover a mini class. Just do something every single day and you will gain traction. And it the whole thing is like my boxing coach used to say, repetition is the mother of technique. You have to repeat, you have to do it, be consistent with it to get results. And I'll tell you something else, folks. I got to say this right now. Hulu 2. If that guy ever decides to record himself expounding upon an idea, a topic, or anything like that, and he just goes off and talks for 20, 30 minutes, that's a podcast I would subscribe to. I would turn the notification bell to all. I would like, I would subscribe. Hell, I'd even pay a few bucks every month to listen to him do a podcast once a week. I would, for real. That's how interesting uh, the things that he shares and the way his mind works is. Uh, his son and I have at times mentioned this to him, but he hasn't really uh, warmed up to the idea as of yet. Hopefully he will though, hopefully he will. Because I think a lot of people would be interested and would benefit from, from his knowledge that he has. Because he is very well studied, well versed. He knows a lot of different stuff about a lot of different stuff. Yeah, stuff. greasing necessary.
That's all from the heart, brother. I think Ukraine once was called Krin. As you means no. No. No, no. Well, I mean, a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word in the context of correct sentence structure does act as a negative condition of state. However, when we look at names like Ukraine, America, uh, Allen, Eli, when you look at names with the balance of honor and grace, we don't touch those, or I don't touch those, um, because they're names. So they were they were named that, and there's no, I mean, for example, all right, you have words like adjective, adverb, and pronoun. Those are all no contract words. For adjective and adverb, it's a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word means no. And then pronoun is P-R-O means no. N-O means no. U-N means no. So it's a no, no, no. Yes, we know that. <laughs> but with the balance of honor and grace, I'm not going to go out and create a whole new positive performance word for adjective or create another word for adverb or create another word for pronoun. Why? The word's already there. People already know what it means. So why confuse the matter? I'm all about efficiency of communication. So you got to weigh the pros and cons of something. So because adjectives are modifiers, adverbs are modifiers, and pronouns take the place of something but are not the thing, why? Just leave them as they are and then sick them. You know what I mean? So you can do the same thing for something like the name of a country. I'm not going to say someone's using a fictitious conveyance of grammar just because the name of their country is Ukraine. They didn't choose that. Just like someone that has a, a name with a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of it, like Alan or Alex, I'm not going to pick on somebody because of that. That's ridiculous if someone would actually even do that. In my, in my view, I would never do that. Well, I would change Republic. Too scary, no public. Well, that's different. I don't know the name of a country, Republic. Oh, I see what you're saying. Republic of whatever. Again, I would just sick it. I mean, what's the point? And you always have to put it in the context of what you're doing. Like, what is the context? Because when, when you commandeer a vessel, a document contract, postal vessel court venue, the first thing and has, that has to be determined is what damage has been done by this grammar? Where's the damage? What's going on? Where's the shipwreck? Where's the trespass? And if you can't answer that question, like the Dominican Republic, if you're looking at that adverb, adjective, pronoun scenario, what, what is the damage? How, how has the Dominican Republic hurt you? And so why would you correct it? Other than just to do as an exercise to show, oh, well, that's an adverb, adjective, pronoun scenario. Like, how would you write that out in correct sentence structure if I was to correct that? Um, let's see, how would you do that? I wouldn't use the word republic at all, I don't think. Hang on.
Yeah, you could just use something like for the tilde Dominican hyphen Commonwealth or something like that. Or even, yeah, you could use a Commonwealth or state. No, you couldn't, you wouldn't, in correct sentence structure, you wouldn't use democracy, because DE means no. In that context, it does anyways. Is DE a negator? Yes, yes, of course. And it depends upon the context, but Terrence, think about it. Think about the word defrost, no frost. De-escalate not to escalate. So DE means no. Terrence, you, you didn't look at any of that up, did you? Yeah, I'm going to give you a hard time about it. Because that's the thing with most people. They just don't look things up. And that is a huge part of learning this grammar, folks, is doing your own work and looking it up and looking at, like I was saying, like every day, 30 minutes, do something. Do something. And par se is one of the biggest foundations of this grammar. Because the more you look something up, the more you remember. Oh, I remember the Proto-Indo-European root of that. Oh, I remember the Old Norse root of that. Oh, I remember the Sanskrit root of that. And then you remember these things. And you have that banked in your formatory apparatus so that if you ever have to use it, you can use it and say, the root of this word is this. Look it up. And you know you're right. And it's contingent upon the other person to look it up if they don't believe you. But you're very confident with what you're saying. That's why parsing every single day is very important. You don't know where to look. Have you ever heard of the word etymology? Have you ever watched my Parse playlist? Like how many of my videos have you watched? Are you new? Are you new here, Terrence? Let, let's find that out first. Let's find out if Terrence is new. Because if Terrence is new here, I'll cut him a break. What about the word communication? The uni in communication creates negativity. It's not in the beginning of the word. I, I mean, let me ask you, Oki. Have you looked it up? Have you looked that word up in the etymology dictionary? And no, I mean, I heard you say, oh, it was a stupid question. There are... To me, there is no such thing as a stupid question. A question is a question. The only time really that a question can be stupid is if the person asking it is not being, if, if their volition is malicious, meaning they're asking a question to hurt or to mess with somebody. They're not being honest about the question. Then it's a stupid question. But as an honest question no matter what it is, it's not stupid. Terrence, are you a, a new viewer or are you a long time viewer? Maybe I can find out.
wonder if there's a place that I can find out how long you've been subscribed. If you even are subscribed. I don't know if you're subscribed or not. I can't tell. <laughs> All right, so, uh, what's their name? Oki. Okay, Oki. How many syllables does the word communication have? And what are the syllables in communication? So, is U-N-I, is that a syllable in communication or not? And then you can get the answer to your question. And Terrence says, long time, kind of on and off. Okay. Well, since you're a long time viewer, then I'm not going to cut you a break. Apologies for that. If you've been on this channel for a long time and you don't know where to look to parse a word, then I'd have to say that... Uh, well, just to be totally blunt, you're not serious about this. You're just kind of playing at it, right? Okay, have you looked up in a dictionary how many syllables communication has? It's very easy, folks. You, you literally are right now, you have an electronic device in your hands that you can use to use Google or whatever you want to look up the syllables of a word, the parts of the word, what each part means. Within seconds, you can have an answer. Within seconds. That's the beauty of this technology. Now, in kindergarten, I'm going to teach you a little technique that I learned way, way back in kindergarten, back in the 70s. How to figure out the syllables of a word, you clap your hands. Call, you, me, pay, shun. Communication. That's five syllables. I'll leave it up to you to figure out the rest. For example, the word communication is a, a five-four word. The label means that communication is a five-syllable word, primary stress on the four syllables. Actually, the syllable is N-I. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so there you go. There's your answer. You got your answer. Two seconds, all by yourself. Things mean a lot more, I find, uh, from my experience of teaching this for six years, people get more value from something if they can answer their own questions. So I tend to more sort of try and guide people one way or the other to look it up themselves and do their own work rather than me just handing it to them. Like, uh, for example, the word comprehension. On the surface, it looks like, okay, well, that word's positive performance. For me, it's not positive performance because of the PRE. Or uh, correspondence. I don't use correspondence because of the RE after the CO. And this is all based on etymological research, by the way. I've been doing this stuff 
every day since the summer of 2017. So I got a lot of study time under my belt, a lot of teaching time. And so these are just uh, things that I've developed for my own self. I try not to get too nitpicky. It just creates more work. So there's a line that everybody has, right? Um, and I try to lay that line down with the balance of the owner and the grace. Like correspondence, for myself, I don't use that word in correct sentence structure, but if I see someone else using that word and everything else is fine, I might mention it to them, but I'm not going to give them too much shit about it. I'm just going to point out, well, hey, did you look it up? Because you know, RE is credentialed as a particle in that word and re does mean no because it negates the now space just so you know that just so you know that you want to continue to use the word that's up to you but i'm not going to give you a hard time about it <laughs> yeah and that's the cool thing about this stuff is none of it is really hidden it's all right there right in front of us you just have to want to want to see it or have the gumption and tenacity to follow through and study and stick with it every day. I mean, it's fine if you're just sort of like, what do you call it, like a dilettante, you know, you just kind of uh, breeze in, breeze out. It's entertaining, but it's not something that you're ever going to use or you don't feel you're going to use it. Or you just find it to be an interesting topic. That's cool. I think that makes up the majority of people that watch this stuff. They don't ever think that they would actually ever have to use it. So therefore they don't try and actually learn it. But it's an interesting topic for them to, to watch. It's sort of like folks that watch boxing or UFC or mixed martial arts. They don't ever have the intention of stepping foot in a gym or least of all set, stepping foot in a gym or in an octagon or in a ring they just like to watch it so it's sort of the same same thing i guess i remember that david miller also mentioned that pre pro are also negators Yeah, he may have mentioned that, but was he correct? Or was he wrong? Because I can pull out David Wynn Miller's book and show you dozens of mistakes on every single page. David Wynn Miller also said that uh, he didn't sleep for a number of years, that he stayed up 24-7. He also said that he was uh, abducted by aliens. He also said that I think they took his heart outside of his body. Uh, I also, he also, I think, claimed to, that he didn't have adrenal glands. And he also claimed to be a 92nd degree Mason. So, I mean, <laughs> the point I'm making, folks, is... You can hear me say something or make a claim or whatever, but it's probably best to just check it out yourself and don't just say, well, because Jason said so, or well, because this person said so. You have to be able to certify it for yourself. Don't just take a stranger's word for it because I am a stranger to you. Just like David Wynn Miller is probably a stranger to you. I'll bet dollars to donuts you never even met David Wynn Miller. I never met him either, but I was blessed and fortunate enough to have some communications with him before he passed away during the last year of his life via phone calls 
text messages, Skypes, and emails. So I did actually communicate with the guy. But I didn't know him personally on a personal level. Okay, uh, just a word of advice. Since you're here on my channel and I am a grammar tutor, if you're using brackets on one end of the sentence to the end of your comment, you don't need to use brackets inside the brackets. I mean, if you want to, that's fine. I'm not here to tell you what to do or not to do. I'm telling you it's not necessary. If it's already in brackets, who cares? If we're here to talk plain, simple English, which is what I'm speaking right now, then that's the contract. No bracketing necessary. I'm here to be cognized. I'm here to be quote unquote understood. And hopefully you are here to understand me and we're not here to play word games and we're not here to confuse or muddy waters or anything like that. So it's cool. You can just type it all out however you want to. Just saying that extra brackets are not necessary if you're already using brackets. But again, I'm not going to tell you how to write. Just a suggestion. All right, anybody have any further questions, anything about uh, the grammar, anything about live life claims, anything about fate, rent, volition claims, CPAS, C treaty, form vessel and dry dock mechanics, anything at all, feel free to ask. Uh, if not, I'll be shutting this down. twice another time thank you for the live video you're very welcome there is no time like now time there is no space like the now space nothing continues like the continuum Barry said, live life claims are rubbish, but get yourself an ID. Who's Barry? Who the F is Barry? I have no idea who Barry is. But I will bet you, Terrence, I will bet you. Let's see. What will I bet? I'll bet you one troy ounce of gold. That whoever Barry is doesn't have one freaking clue about correct sentence structure. I'll bet you one troy ounce of gold that he doesn't know anything about correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. What do you say to that?
Who is Barry? Does anybody know who Barry is? Whoever Barry is, I mean, maybe live life claims are rubbish to him because, of course, an instrument is going to be rubbish to someone that doesn't know what the hell it is or how to use it. It's going to be useless, virtually useless. If you get, uh, let's see, what, what's a good example I can use? If you buy a cupboard from Ikea, it comes in a bunch of different pieces. If you lay it on the floor and you don't have directions, you have no idea how to use it or what to do with it. It's just a bunch of pieces and it looks complicated. You're going to say, well, it's rubbish. It's stupid. Throw it away. You have to have the knowledge to be able to put it together so that it becomes something useful. Wherever Barry is, He's that guy. Clueless. And that's usually the reaction of most people that don't know anything about correct sentence structure, but they do have like a basis in common law and UC codes, UCC codes and things like that. They think they know something. So then when something like correct sentence structure comes along, they automatically are resistant to it and if they can't learn it within five minutes, they dismiss it. Correct sentence structure is definitely not something you can learn in five minutes. You're lucky if you can learn it in one hour, let alone 20, or let alone 2,000 hours. Like it took me 2,000 hours of study before I could even use this back in 2017. And we're talking diligent daily study. Most people just don't have that. They just don't know how to do it. Because you use the postal system and the postal system is our seat if government. Bro, you're not answering my question. Barry who? I have no idea who Barry is. Let's establish this first. You're saying the word Barry as if I should know who it is, but I have no idea who Barry is. I don't even know anybody named Barry. Not in, in my personal life or... In internet life, don't know any berries. The postal system is a system. And if you know how to use it, you can use it. They're custom clearinghouse brokers. Terrence, I've been using the postal system successfully for six years um, to facilitate my federal postal court, my federal postal court. Not the Federal Postal Court, but my Federal Postal Court, of which I am the document contract court authority, the IE, the judge of. I don't use the word judge. I leave that to the fiction. I use the word document contract court authority. And I have no problems. I know how to use that system, rule one, rule equal. I go down to my local postal station. I maintain friendly relationships with my clerks down there. They have their stamps. I have my stamps. They're custom clearinghouse brokers. That's all they are, are facilitators. And it's all contract. But again, Terrence, uh, since you are a longtime viewer, but you haven't really done much studying. Maybe, maybe this will galvanize you to get closure on this so instead of saying well this person said that and that person said this if you learn it yourself you'll know what's bullshit and what's not you're not going to have barry in one ear and jason in the other ear you're just going to have terrence and terrence is going to decide what's bullshit and what's not that's the gift that correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar brings when you get closure on it. It's a very clear filter. You can really see what's bullshit and what's not. And I can see right off the bat that whoever Barry is, as far as the context of quantum grammar, 
He's, uh, Oh, let's just say, let's put your hip waders on, huh? Put your mudden boots on. Why don't you just say it in the comments, Terrence? We're all friends here. Put Barry's last name up here. That's another thing, you know, folks. I put my full name out there, my full correct name and my face. 900 videos. Everybody knows who I am. Well, everybody that comes here can clearly see who I am. If someone wants to hide, doesn't want to give up information, doesn't want to stand by what, there's, what they say in the public, then I dismiss them. Because if they're not ready to stand on 10 toes behind what they say and give their correct name instead of a nom de guerre, and put their correct picture up there so that we know who they are. We know who's talking to us. If they're not ready to do that, then something's rotten in Denmark. Huge red flag. Probably a bullshit artist. I have a lot of honor for people that aren't afraid to step up and say what they say. And stand behind their words. How many hours do you estimate it took to learn guitar and then be able to use that skill with proficiency? Well, for me, guitar, it took me two years of uh, playing, of practicing before I was good enough to be in a band. I started playing in December of 1985. So we'll say, I'm sorry, yeah, 1985. So by the end of 1987, I was good enough to be in a band. <clears throat> and I played a lot, dude, a lot. All right, Hulu 2, thank you very much. Many blessings, brother. Yeah, see, when people... When I start calling people out and like say, well, okay, bury who? Or, you know, explain this. And then people get hesitant about it. That's an automatic red flag in my book. By the way, folks, by the way, I saw on TikTok someone called the rat catcher, the rat catcher, someone on TikTok called the rat catcher published a post basically saying that Mark lowercase k Kishon Christopher is in jail, that he's been in jail. Isn't that interesting? And also, the, the his people are saying that, oh, he's in jail on no charges. He's been charged with nothing. When I hear someone say that, I know they're lying. Even though it is the fiction system, they're not going to put you in there for nothing. There's a reason. I can kind of guess what it is because I've been saying it for years. I've been saying it for years. If you're out there advertising something, guaranteeing something, not guaranteeing, but you're saying that, well, if you give me this amount of money, if you give me 3,000 pounds, I will teach you this. I will teach you quantum grammar. I will teach you how to be your own sheriff or your own coroner, or whatever whatever it is he was teaching. Yeah, at one time he was selling plenipotentiary federal judgeships, okay? 
If you're doing that, selling those things to people, telling them that you're going to teach them how to do those things, and then they pay you the money, and then when the class or the course is concluded, and they still don't know correct sentence structure, they have no idea how to be a federal judge or a sheriff or a coroner, they're going to get mad. And they're going to feel like they got ripped off. And then they're probably going to report the person to the Better Business Bureau or something. This is just speculation on my part as to what happened. Because I know that Mark does not know the grammar. He does not have closure on it. So he can't really teach it, but he does claim to teach it. And he claims to be the chief federal judge of whatever the hell. But yet, here he is in prison, he can't even help himself. If that is true. So that's what I think happened. It wouldn't be too hard for someone to basically go undercover, pay money to attend his course, and then realize, this guy's ripping people off. And there you have it. But that's speculation. I don't really know what happened. I have no idea. I don't talk to any of those people at all. I found Barry. Okay, Oki, okay, what's his last name? Oh, wow. The video I see is named Barry Witt got his mail carrier position with the help of PJA. Yeah, I looked it up too, and I, I didn't find anything, but I'm done with that topic. It see that Terrence isn't... Uh, Terrence has, has gone silent on the radio, which usually happens... When people come on and they start making claims or saying stuff, and then you ask them to back up what they're saying, you ask them to give proof, a continuance of the evidence, and then suddenly they go mute. They go silent. The reason is, is because they don't have it. They don't have proof. Or for some reason, they're not sure of their proof. And I say this, I don't know if that's true in Terrence's case. I'm just talking about experiences I've had in the past with folks like that. Let's, let's transpose that to if you're trying to use correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar in a foreign vessel and dry dock under duress. If you start making claims in there and you can't back them up, guess what's going to happen? You're probably going to go to jail because you don't know what you're talking about. You have to know what you're talking about before you open your mouth, especially with correct sentence structure. You must. It is critical. That's why I do things the way I do things. It's for the safety. You can't just start saying, well, so-and-so said that this is blah, 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 because you're going to get called to the carpet on it. They're going to say, well, who's so-and-so? Are you here? Are you able to stand on ten toes? Or do you need to call this other so-and-so in that you're talking about? Why isn't they? Why aren't they here? Why are we talking to you? You obviously don't know what the hell you're talking about. Get this other person in here. That's why it's a good idea to learn it yourself. Do everything yourself. So the only person that you have to rely on is yourself. Whether you stand or fall, it's you. Nobody else. You're not using logical fallacies. You're not appealing to authority. It's you. Thanks for the videos. I'm studying them and practicing on Instagram. Awesome. Yeah, I do have an Instagram page. Although I don't really go on it all that often. But I do have an Instagram page. I have a TikTok. 
My main place is this YouTube channel, though. So welcome. And if you are serious about the grammar, and I mean serious, if you really want to learn it, as in go to school to learn it, contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and apply for a workshop. I have a whole curriculum that I've been teaching for six years. We got workshop one, workshop two, workshop three, on down the line as far as you want to take it. As far as you're willing to go, how far you want to go, that's how far I will take you as a teacher. Just email me in the confidential at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and please include your full correct name and I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation. It does not cost anything for the video consultation except for your now space. But email me for more details. Yeah, I don't think it's that berry either. Doesn't sound like it. And in any case, Terrence has gone silent. He has left the building. So, thank you everyone for joining. Thank you, Oki, for your participation. Greatly appreciated. Thank you, Shantavia. Shantavia. I think is how you say it. Thank you for your comment, Hulu 2. And even thank you to Terrence, even though he disappeared. Appreciate everybody's comments.